Welcome to Women Engage, where real women talk about real issues. We have a panel of beautiful women from all over our wonderful continent, and they've come to share with you about some of the real issues that take place in our lives. If you want to get engaged in our conversation, please log on to our website, www.ecdadventist.org, and click on Women Engage. Uh, you'll be able to um, raise questions, join in the discussion, make comments. We hope that you get engaged with our discussion. So I'm going to introduce myself and I'm going to ask the ladies to tell us something about themselves today. I'm going to ask you to tell us one thing, tell us your name and tell us if I gave you just a, a sack full of money, you can fill it with as much money as you like, and, but you had to spend it today, right now, what would you buy? So I'll start with myself. My name is Jocelyn Isabidie. If you gave me a sack full of money right now, I would go and buy a beautiful house for me and my husband, and I would buy property for each of my children. My name is Debbie Maloba, and I'm from uh, Democratic Republic of Congo. With that money, I would have uh, bought a beautiful house, but also have some uh, business that will help me uh, when I'm old with my, fam my husband and also that will keep or sustain the life of my children. But don't forget, I will also help those who are in need. And now I feel like I should say mine again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh. all right, let's go. <laughs> um, I'm Angela Wama. If you are to give me such money, I will first of all give myself a treat mm -hmm. by going for holidays mm -hmm. and then uh, do some investment mm -hmm. and then have some to help the need. Hmm. Okay. My name is Caroline Corelli. I'm from Mauritius. And uh, if I had that money, I would make every, all the children smile for this Christmas oh. and I would buy an island. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Knight. I'm from Kenya. If I'd have such kind of money, I'd use it to make a difference. Maybe put up a foundation or a charity of, of sorts. And I'd also use it on some investment, probably buying a property. Yeah. Hmm? My name is Yetunde Odeemi. If I lay my hands on such money, Knowing that I'm not good with budgeting, <laughs> but there's a dream I've always had. And that's the fact that I would use that money to start a cloth line mm. oh. and get women to be properly dressed oh. and get girls especially to dress tastefully when mm. they're coming out. Wow. Mm. Wow. Well, today our topic is women and money and it was it's interesting hearing all your responses and yeah I do feel like I want to say mine again <laughs> but um, it looks like money represents different things to us so like from the responses that we gave what does money represent to us I talked about you know having a house so I think for me money is security you know knowing that I'm secure in my retirement we have a home we have um, security for my children they have a home so I, I would say money is security. Mm -hmm. What else is money? What does it represent? I'd say money is a blessing because okay. I'd use it to bless others. Uh -huh. you know? It's a blessing. Good. Mm -hmm. yes. Anything else? Money is? I think money is a tool uh -huh. to be used, you know, like something you send on errands. Mm. Yes. I, I grew up in a setting where I got to know that you don't have to be a slave to money. Mm. Don't let it control you. But if you have money, use it as a tool to better the lives of others mm. and better your own life as well. Mm. Because you cannot be promoting help to other people mm -hmm. when you are not showing it. It's not reflecting mm. in the way you use it. So mm -hmm. there's no need having a headache about not having enough money. Mm. Rather, there is a need to say no matter how small it is, mm. I can portion it out and it can still work for me mm. and still work for somebody else. Okay. Yeah. I'll say money is a means I use to satisfy my need. Mm -hmm. My needs. 
Yeah. yeah. Mm. And it was interesting, it's not just our needs, but sometimes even our wants. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You know, you don't need to have a clothes line. You don't mm. need to give yourself a treat. Mm. But sometimes I want to give myself a treat. Yes. It's nice to do something nice mm. for myself, True. not because I need it, mm. but because I want it. Mm. So it's also a tool to provide for my wants as well yes. as, as my needs. Mm. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. I may also say that uh, money is one of the ways that determine my, uh, my future, mm-hmm. my well-being. Mm-hmm. Because without money, without uh, controlling it, I will never be able to uh, satisfy what I need in the future or what I want to be in the future. Okay. Yes. You talk about controlling money. What do you yeah. mean? How do you control money? To use it wisely. You use it wisely. Mm. Okay. So can money control us? Yes. 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 And how how does it do that? I was going to say uh, <laughs> money. I don't want to be a slave to uh-huh. money, yeah. but uh-huh. it would help me not to be a slave. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so it will help you not to be a slave. Yeah. To work. For okay, example. to work. Oh, I like that. Yeah. It will help you not to be a slave to, to work. Someone else. Mm. To someone else. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Mm. So how can I keep myself then from being a slave to money? I don't focus on money. Okay. But Use it wisely, like Debbie said. Uh huh. Control money. Okay. I don't really budget, like Yetunde <laughs> said she's bad at, mm. but I use money wisely. Mm. Isn't that budgeting in a way? Not really. Mm. Budgeting Not is you plan, yes. mm. you write down. Mm. I used to do it mm. yeah. when I didn't have money. <laughs> <laughs> you budget when you know it's scarce mm. and you know you have to yeah. use it wisely, but mm. you just, you know. Use it wisely without sitting down, budgeting, yeah. writing down, okay. knowing how much to spend mm. this month. For so what if I don't have money? Or if I don't feel like I have enough money? How can I use what I don't have? I think the word is contentment. Mm-hmm. Mm. When you are content, it's not going to be about the size or the quantity of money mm. you have like Carol is saying. Mm. It's going to be about the fact that if this comes, then I know what I'm going to do with it. Mm. And that helps you not to be a slave to it. Mm. When you are not content, you get to be enslaved by money. Mm. Because you don't sleep, you don't eat right, you don't do things properly because you are anxious mm. about this money is too little, it's not going to do something for me. Yeah. I, I'm not the best person with budgeting for a very long time. Mm. I grew up like that. And my dad used to say, I pray you get a man who understands you. Mm -hmm. Because if I have money, for me, it has to be spent. Mm. It has to be spent on the things that I think I should use it for right now. Mm. And my dad says, but you are not not keeping some. You need to keep some. You need to have an account. Mm. And when I got married, God helped me. Mm. I found one man who could understand that this girl is not able to budget, and so he does the budgeting on my behalf. Okay. Until I came to the mission field. Mm. When I got to the mission field, I didn't have a job. Mm. And so I didn't have a salary. Mm. And so there was nothing to plan on, you know? And I was, my husband was amazed because he gave me the ATM card and he said, just go once in a while, you spend something. Mm. But I'm not going to the office, I'm not going anywhere. Mm. So I didn't have to buy new clothes, I didn't have to do anything. Mm. I was content with mm. what I had to spend at home. Mm. You know, to do the grocery for the home, yes, I could. Mm. But I didn't have to go and shop and roam around and say I'm shopping for clothes. Mm. And so I think contentment is the word. Okay. When you are content, it's not about how big or how small or how little you have, Mm. like Carol said, you just do it within the means Mm. of what you have. Okay. All right. All right. So um, interestingly, you've talked about, um, you know, your husband and you're getting married and Mm. and at some point he was working and you're not working. And I think um, as, um, as married women, one thing that sometimes can bring a bit of tension is money. And it is actually said that money is a very big factor in relationships and particularly in relationship breakups the finances so how do you deal with it is it our money your money my money in a married kind of relationship whose money is it is it mine is it yours is it ours if we both well, sorry okay. go ahead. yeah if both are working and uh-huh. uh, are earning that money yeah it's, it's both 
What if okay. I'm working and he's not working? Okay. Well, with uh, our African culture, yeah. it is expected that the man should, you know, earn the money. Okay. So what and happens? And the woman supports. So what happens in my African culture when that doesn't happen? What happens when it could be that my husband is laid off work? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It could be that my husband has become sick and cannot work mm -hmm. for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. I'm working mm -hmm. and he's not. Mm -hmm. Well, it's still our money. It's still our money. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's still our money. It's our money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, when I want to live in harmony in our family with my husband, my children, my relatives, my community, we need to call it our money. We need to put in mind that whatever uh, we get, let us decide together. Mm. Let us uh, work together. Let us plan together so that it will help us to live in harmony. Because if I, I, I let money control me, I will never be satisfied. Mm. Yes. Uh, it's interesting because Debbie talked about money never being enough. Mm. <laughs> the wise man said in Ecclesiastes, he said, whoever loves money never has enough. Mm. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with their mm. income. Mm. So we're going to talk a little bit more about um, you know, what is enough money, how to manage money, and maybe even, you know, think about um, considerations um, for even unmarried women and what they should be thinking about in terms of how to manage their money um, when we come back um, after our commercial break. So stay tuned. Welcome back to Women Engage, where real women talk about real issues. So, just before our break, we were talking about a situation where maybe your husband isn't working. Because like Angela said, you know, in our African society, it's expected that the man should work and support the family. Mm -hmm. So let's start with that expectation. Is it fair in this day and age? Is it a fair expectation that the woman... You know, the man works and earns. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Let's start from there. Yes, Yatunde. Um, I think there are circumstances that come up in life where the man loses his job, he gets laid off, and the woman is working. Mm. And I have, met, I, I, I have examples of women like that, and I tell you, I doff my heart for them. Mm. From these women I have met, they never would say it out. Mm. They buy clothes, put on the man. Mm. Put money in his hands and say, if you need to go out with your friends, even when there's a family function, they stand in and they say, you just take this money and go do the needful things in your family. Mm. And you would never hear it from them. I think those are the real women. Mm. Because those circumstances would also get to change later. The man may not get a regular job after, but he would still have to be the father mm. in the home. Mm. Yes, the African society expects that the man would be the one to earn the money. Mm -hmm. But I tell you, there are a thousand and one women out there who earn more than their husband, mm. who we call the breadwinners and we say the husbands are the soup winners. <laughs> Yet it has not made them less of men. Mm. Neither has it made them less of married women. Mm. So I think it's the maturity of the individual. Mm. We must understand that times change. Mm. If the time changes and it is the man who is earning less, mm. please don't disrespect him. Mm. Because the basis for marrying, after all, it's not about the love and the, the holding and the romance. It's about the respect you have for each other. Mm. So if you base it on the respect, Whatever the circumstances that comes, mm. if the man is not able today, you stand in and be the strong woman. Mm. Be the one to stand in and be the face of mm. the home. Mm. And put the money in his hands and let him act mm. the way he would have acted if he had a salary. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Mm. All right. So respect. Yes. And love and, and all of that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what if you have put the money in his hand and he's irresponsible with it? Or even in her hand, because you talked about you didn't know how to budget. Mm. And so you, you married a man who understood you and accepted you the way that you were. Mm. And you said um, that when you started, before you started working, your husband would give you his card. Mm. But you realized you didn't really need much because you weren't working. Yeah. What if your husband gave you that ATM card and you just went and blew everything on the budget at the beginning of the month? 
on new clothes and new shoes, even though you didn't need it. I should and pack my things and go back to my father's <laughs> house. <laughs> if I do that, yeah. I, I agree that some men are irresponsible. I'm not saying all men, please. Mm -hmm. And when you look at it, the man does not stand up to be irresponsible mm -hmm. out of the blues. It's about the ego of the men. Mm. Men live by their ego. And so anything that hurts their ego, they tend to take it the other way. Mm. And so if the man is irresponsible, mm -hmm. um, permit me to use an example. Mm. I, knew, I knew a woman whose husband went irresponsible. You know what she did? She moved out. She moved out and she took five kids with her. <laughs> and she said, I'm not going to let this man continue like this. He comes home, beats her up, mm. takes the money from her. It was before the days of m mm. And so she moved out. Today she's able to stand by her own. She's mm. able to send her children through school, through the merry-go-round mm. system, mm. where she joins a group of 50 women and everybody um, contributes some amount of money. Mm. So I would not say the woman should stay and continue to be abused. No. Is that abuse, that. though? If, uh, we're, we're, we're not talking about a man who, he, you said he would come home drunk and beat yes, his wife. I think yes. that's something. But we're just talking about the responsible use of money. So yeah. you have a man, he does not beat you. Mm -hmm. He does not abuse you. Mm -hmm. He does not cheat on you. Mm -hmm. But he just doesn't know how to make money. He doesn't know how to use money in a responsible way. Mm -hmm. So are you going to pack up your kids and move out of the house? I think it's still an emotional distress. <laughs> I For me, you, know. you have to learn this before marrying mm -hmm. a guy. How? How do you learn that then? By knowing there are, cert, there are some principles when mm. you're dating someone. Yeah. To know whether he's right for me, to pray on him, and to know. It's just to know before. Mm. I think it's, it's, it's very important to know before um, you get married how he manages money. Mm. You'll see. Mm. You'll see, he'll, he'll, he'll come and tell you, oh, you know, I'm broke and I borrow. Mm. How can you borrow from your girlfriend? Mm. What if he doesn't have? No, but you know, <laughs> one time uh -huh. is okay, yes. Set two times, times uh -huh. yeah. three yeah. times. Yeah. Hey, there's something wrong there. Yeah. <laughs> That's so what do you say then to the young woman who's watching this program right now mm -hmm. and she's not married and she's, you know, looking to start a relationship? So she, should she make sure she gets a man who is set? Learn to stand on your own feet. Mm. Learn to save when you start working. Mm. My parents, I think, gave me that good example mm. of setting aside money, mm. you know, of saving money. Even when, when, when I started working, not having any boyfriend, I, start, I opened a bank account. Mm. I think I, I learned to, what if I never get married? Mm. I have to go in life, yeah. mm. have to reach something. Mm. So I think to the young woman, I would say, learn to stand on your feet. Okay. Yeah. And mm -hmm. also when you are married, because you can't also predict, mm. maybe what you need to do also is to, the way you, you are behaving. Mm. When you are married, you are open and you collaborate, you cooperate with your husband. Mm. Finally, he will admit and he will come because you need also to help him. Mm. If he spend money without uh, planning, as a wife, you need also to help him to be open because it is very important to have a healthy marriage mm. that includes also finances. Yeah. So you, you are open and you, you share you give advices, mm. you will also help him. Mm. Yeah. Jocelyn, can, yes. can we be real with what you're saying? Mm -hmm. What you have described is a lazy man. Mm -hmm. I would not encourage any young girl to mm -hmm. marry a lazy man. Mm -hmm. Carol says it, mm. that at the time when you are dating, mm. you have time to study this man yeah. and see how he does. Mm. He takes you out to eat today mm. for, for lunch, for something, and he says, oh, you I forget my card, <laughs> pay. Mm. Second time, it mm. happens the same way. Mm. And you sit back and you say, no, but he loves me. <laughs> Third time, mm. it happens the same way. Mm. And then you go ahead, he comes one day and he says, you know, for some reason I can't pay my house rent. Mm. What is that? That's a lazy man. That's <coughs> a man who does not want to do anything for himself. Mm. I quite agree 
that a woman should be hardworking. Yes. And I admire hardworking women. Mm. A woman should learn to save money. Mm. I agree. A woman should be very open in her marriage. Mm. Tell the husband things. His money, my money, is our money. Mm. It's meant for the good of everybody. The things, I'm sure the things each one of us here does on behalf of the family with our money. Mm. We don't go back and tell my, your husband to say, I have helped this way, you give me back my money. No, we don't do such things. Mm. But when a man is lazy, okay. the pen of, of inspiration says, do not marry a lazy man. Mm -hmm. Yes. What's the do difference not... between a man who's lazy and a man who's poor? He will show you he's struggling. Okay. Yeah. But that lazy man, oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> it's obvious. He doesn't want to pay like yeah. we are saying. Mm -hmm. One time is okay. Second time, well, it's still love. You're blinded by yes. love. Third time, I think you veil. Mm -hmm. You should. You should remove the yeah, veil. Yeah, remove mm -hmm. the veil. Mm -hmm. So, but if he's, I, I want to to, uh, to really understand this for mm -hmm. the sake of our young women. Mm -hmm. Okay, you said that it's different. Mm -hmm. But how am I going to tell the difference? How? How do I tell that? Um, you know, if he's, he, he, de he honestly doesn't have. He yeah, doesn't but, have. Did you, but did you notice the word Carol used? What was that? He struggles. Yes. He's a struggling man. He's trying. Yes, he's, he's trying. trying. That yes. does not mean he will not make it someday. Yes. Mm. But you can see his efforts. Mm. Okay, what and kind of things should this young woman look for? What signs? He's a poor guy, but you can see. He has potential. What kind of things do you look out for? He doesn't have a lot of money. He can't take you out. He can't mm. buy you expensive gifts. Yeah. But then what kind of things do you look out for to know that he's, 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 he's got the potential to be a responsible man with his money? What do you look out for? Then? Sometimes you'll notice probably the lazy man will come, no money, mm. but with a big bouquet. Okay. <laughs> the yes. struggling one. Yes. He'll come with one rose. Yes. And that's love. Yeah. And he, and sometimes being poor is more is being honest. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's honest. Yeah. Poor is honest. He'll yes. say, you know, I don't have Yes. And then some 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 men will even say, you know, I I I, I earn this, this, this. I don't know if you want to have a future with me, mm. but that's all I can offer. Mm. Mm. So you see whether love will, 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 will take you to, mm. to have a future yeah. with a struggling man. Yeah. Yeah. And many a times, that struggling man will be blessed. Yeah. Mm. And you don't know what God has in the future. Yeah. Mm. He'll be blessed like, you know. So we're not judging the men by their w size of their wallet, mm. no. but by their no. response, how they are yeah. responsible yeah. Yeah. in in. in, in in dealing with life's issues. Mm. Yeah. Jocelyn, how yes. about for those young ladies who mm. are maybe probably just blinded with love, they, uh -huh. they're not oh. able to decipher whether, um, whether this man is actually uh, responsible with his money, as you'd asked earlier on, mm. you know? The man is pretending and he, he or she then, and, and ends up getting married to this person. Mm. I think the thing that is left is just to help at the point mm. now that you're now together, you're married, you help. Yeah. And then maybe we could ask ourselves a, a, another question. What if you're now in the marriage mm. and you're both unable to, um, you're not good with money, Yeah. you see? Mm. Yeah. If you're both not good, because yeah, yes. everything that we've been saying, it's the irresponsible man. Yes. We also have irresponsible women. Yes. Mm. Um, we yes. can be very irresponsible as mm. well with the way that we manage our finances. Mm. And so we both, we both need help. Mm. So if I am in that situation where either both of us or one of us or I am irresponsible with my finances, what can I do to get help? To help me to know how to manage my money better? Because I think we agree it's important, but mm. what do I do? How do I do that? There are some men who let their wives, you know, do whatever. Mm. I don't think this is right. Mm -hmm. Be together, do mm. everything together. Mm. Because some women I know, some of my close friends, they would spend, they want this, they want that couch, they want everything to mm. be perfect, mm. and they are not even working. Yeah. The man is the mm. breadwinner, mm. and he just, you know, mm. lays back mm. until mm. he goes into debt. Yes. Mm. And is, that's not a wise woman. No. So, yeah. Angela. You know, yeah, you know, the, the mindset we, we grew up with is mm. that uh, the men are the key financial decision makers. Mm. And so, with that uh, mindset, you know, we, we grew up that way, knowing that the man sh should be yeah. the mm. key decision financial, I mean, financial decision maker. Mm. 
but it's not always the case. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the, the woman is the lady is the better person. Yes. Mm -hmm. But there is something that is key when uh, in marriage, the the man and the woman need to deliberately build an emergency phone. Mm. Emergency phone mm. that will help them. Uh, somehow, you, you, it's not something we pray for. But Some, if something happens. So in case of something uh, yeah. happens, the man may lose his job or the lady mm. may lose her job. Yeah. Uh, divorce, mm. that may mm. be divorce. Mm. Or you may also lose your spouse, maybe through death. Mm. Yeah, so it is important that uh, uh, the couple builds a, a, an emergency phone. Mm. Even within the, 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 the crisis where maybe the man is the one who is not uh, good with handling money, it is still advisable that the one who is, who is uh, better off makes an, an deliberate, deliberate effort to ensure that there, there is an emergency phone. Mm. Okay, well, we've run out of time on this really interesting um, topic. But I think we can take inspiration from the woman of Proverbs chapter 31. Mm. You know, um, that woman who uh, we all aspire to be someone who helps um, in a very practical way um, to keep our family stable. Um, so money is a gift we've learned this evening. It's a blessing um, that comes from God. And it's a tool that we can use to meet our own needs but also to bless others. But let's, let's not become slaves mm -hmm. to money, but mm -hmm. allow ourselves um, to use our money to glorify God mm -hmm. and, and to be a blessing to others. Um, we hope that you will join us next time on Women Engage, where we will continue to talk about uh, real issues with real women. <laughs>